we were out. We just played a show in Detroit, and this was on the last tour I was on, which is the Pell tour. And uh, we were just like, yeah, let's go through the border. Our next show is in Toronto. So we're like, we'll get through the border, just hang out in Canada, and then drive the next day to Toronto. So we drive, get through the border, stop at Windsor, Canada, which is like, you know, like 20 minutes away from Detroit. Me and the homie, Christian, are like, what's tight, what's tight in Windsor? It's like 1 a.m you know, what, on a Tuesday or whatever. So we go to a bar, pay the cover, get in. There's like five people in there. We're like, okay, this is whack as fuck. We go to a bouncer, we're like, what's popping in Windsor? And he's like, there's a strip club down the street. So me and Chris are like, all right, let's do it. Whatever, let's see what's popping. Go to a strip club. Off top, it was very sketchy. They charged us at the door, we paid whatever. Then they're like, oh, if you want to actually get into the room where the strippers are going to be at, you got to pay again. So we did that. And then we get we get in after paying like the double cover. They're like, all right, now if you want to go upstairs, you know, to like, you know, hang out with your, with your strippers, pay that fee. So we paid that. And then they're like, okay, now if you want them to start dancing, you, <laughs> you got to pay again. So I mean, I'm looking at Christian like, yo, okay, this is cool. But when the strippers start dancing, and so we pay that fee and then do the dance, it's fun, you know, it's whatever, it's Windsor, Canada, what do you expect? And then we get back downstairs. My homie Christian looks at his wallet, he's kind of like, you know, feeling empty, he's dry, you know, doesn't have any more cash. And they're like, oh, there's one more fee you gotta pay, you know, the whole, the, the full fee, you know, for the whole dance. And they give us the tab and Christian's like, yo, <laughs> can't do this. The bouncers start coming in, the whole thing starts becoming wild, like there are people all around us. I've already paid mine, just looking at the homie like, yo, what's up? <laughs> the girls are nice, like they're like extremely nice and you know, all up on us when we first came in like ballers they started switching up like yo you're not gonna pay what's going on you like what fee is this cut the story short don't go to a strip club in windsor canada wait till you get to toronto i paid that shit we left it was whack it was pretty bad and then i was telling a story in toronto like to a bunch of people just like yo this is what happened to us yesterday at windsor and they're like why did you think it would make sense to go to a strip club in Windsor, Canada? Like, you're you're so dumb. And I was like, okay, okay, for sure. I make the beat, and I'm playing it for Cola. I made this last night, and I could always see as soon as he heard it, it was like this little look in his eye, like, I need that. But he didn't say it, he didn't say it. So creating 1111 was one of my most spiritual moments when it comes to creating music because of what it meant to me at the time, as well as what it meant to me moving forward even. I think the biggest thing that Lupe showed me like in the whole rap game and the music industry was to be true to yourself as an artist, to make sure that you always keep consistency, to have that constant message and to never lose track of the message. Things have to change about what we understand about why things are happening. You know what I'm saying? What we understand about why poverty is happening. What we understand about why hoods on the south side kind of resemble each other and look the same and people are downtrodden for the same reasons. People can't find jobs for the same reasons and people get locked up for the same. Like there's, a, it's systematic, like it's a system.